Our next speaker believes strongly that there is no such thing as limited resources because the mind is capable of unlimited resource fullness. Seeing what he has accomplished, I would tend to agree. This talk on ambient information, the DNA of decision making, I introduce the CEO and founder of American RFID Solutions, Harold Clampett. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I love this quote from Bill Gates. I love it because it's true, but also because it's incomplete. Have you ever planned a vacation using Google search? Have you ever visited a website to coordinate or schedule an activity for something in your personal life? I bet we all have. I think this statement would be more accurate if we replaced the word business with life. Information technology creates ambient information. Over the next few minutes, I'd like to explore the linkage between ambient information, the internet, and decision making. To get started, I'd like to take a look at how information has evolved with mankind. If we go back to Neanderthal man, decisions were very simple back then. Maybe it was fight or flight. It was an era of diminishing returns. Today, it's vastly different. We have a record population. Information is growing faster than what we can store it, faster than what we can analyze it, probably even faster than what we can understand. It's an era of increasing returns. Our decisions are routinely made in the context of very complicated systems with an abundance of choice. So in this transition from Neanderthal man to modern man, we've learned we can make better decisions when we have access to higher quality information. Let's see how this unfolds in our, in our when I commute to Chicago. The traffic is so nasty that I bought not just a GPS unit. I bought one that has an FM receiver to give me real-time traffic updates. Why? So I don't have to be one of these guys. Now imagine if we had all the information about all the traffic. That whole scenario changes. That would be ambient information relevant to traffic. Let's take a look at how that would unfold. Consider that same drive, but now when I put into my GPS where I'm heading to, it sends that information using the 4G wireless network back to a central database back to some routing algorithm that can use it. So does everyone else. And then the satellite network in the sky is examining every inch of the Chicagoland roads and using that to compute real-time statistics. This gets fed back to that routing algorithm. Now on my GPS, I can get information to make better decisions on which roads I want to take primary roads, secondary roads. We've eliminated the problem where I just take my slice of information and use it to try and optimize for my journey. What I really need to do is get all the information all the time, and then I can optimize the decisions I'll make on which roads to take. And if that helps everyone else, all of a sudden we've load balanced, and now we've got increased capacity. So this is a great example of how ambient information can help us make better decisions. So let's take a look at definition. First, I want to tell you that ambient information is everywhere. 
thanks to microelectronics, we can now store and record our everyday transactions as ambient information. In fact, today, millions of items every day are being tracked by sensors that have internet connectivity, giving us unprecedented visibility into their movement and their condition. Ambient information increases the capability for us to measure, manage, monitor, and react to the world we live in. It is providing real-time data for automation, for analysis, and for control. Let's take a look at some of the categories for ambient information. This first example, the single loop, has what I call a one-to-many relationship. What I mean by that is we can have one producer of information to many users. A great example of this is an encyclopedia or a website. The second self-organizing loops has the attribute of many-to-many. -many. many producers, many users, and they can be interactive. A great example of this is Wikipedia. Its user community has set up rules so they can dynamically add, delete, revise content. <clears throat> and last but not least, the viral expansion loops. Well, those are the most interesting. Why? Because of their growth. They're like taking a penny and doubling it every day. So at the end of the first week, we've got less than a buck. But on the 30th day, you've got $5.4 million. A good example of this is Facebook. Let's see how we can illustrate these examples. I've got two cases that I want to talk to. The first is ambient information within what I call the bricks and mortar retail store. The big breakthrough there was the cash register. It provided when something was sold, who sold it, time it was sold, SKU, price. That blossomed into a point of sale system. It integrated in with what was in the back room so that we could replenish the floor. And it even got to the point where we could send an economic reorder quantity to our vendors. The virtual store also had breakthroughs with ambient information. I bet at some time we've probably ordered a book online. And if you've done that, there's a good chance that you've seen a screen like this. And I want to draw your attention to this. Customers who bought this item also bought. And why I think that's important in terms of ambient information because it represents being both a user and producer of information. So simultaneously, you're doing both. Let's take these ideas and see how we can leverage them. How can we scale them? And that's where I want to talk about the internet of life. Now, there are many reasons why the internet of life is a Herculean force for change. Let's take a look at the sensors that are capable of capturing our everyday transactions and converting them into ambient information. Specifically, I'd like to look at the sensors that we call radio frequency identification, RFID. Now here's a real quick lesson in RFID. RFID tags are placed on items that we want to automatically identify, while RFID readers are the devices to automatically track the tags. They have internet connectivity. Now what I'd like to talk about is using those sensors, 
how, they're game changers, and they can be like a turbocharger for the internet engine. My first graph is showing you the cost of an RFID tag as a function of the number of readers that are in the network. And what jumps out from this plot is as we increase the number of readers, you see the cost of the tag and the readers drop. This is a function of Moore's law, which applies to anything made from silicon. Now let's take a look at the value. Here we have a very interesting story. As we increase the number of readers and the number of tags that are in this system, its value grows. It's like a cell phone. You know, if you only have one cell phone, how good is it? When you have more than a billion, it's spectacular. Let's combine these ideas. That's the power. It's the concept and the phenomenon of increasing returns. As we grow the number of readers, the benefit that they create, the tags and the readers, continues to grow. Because of that, our ability to generate and accumulate ambient information also grows. Ambient information allows us to make better decisions. And what I'd like to share with you is how we're going to do that. Isaac Newton, he cleverly stated, for every action, there's a reaction, implying for every decision, there's a desired and undesired action. Adam Smith, in his Wealth of Nations, gives insight into how individual choice can affect and benefit the collective group. Smith proclaimed that when the individual tries to seek and pursue their own self-interest, it frequently benefits society. Tragedy of the Commons by Garrett Hardin expands on this thinking and explains something that I think is really important. We need to take into account, be very careful in understanding what the hidden costs are and benefits when an individual optimizes something for themselves. Here's how tragedy of the commons develops. I'd like you to now close your eyes, imagine a pasture open to all. To maximize his gain, the rational herdsman will increase the number of animals in his herd. But this is the conclusion reached by all the other herdsmen that share the commons. That's tragedy. They all incorrectly conclude to increase the size of the herd, but they fail to take into consideration that the commons has limited capacity. This is the law of diminishing returns. It applies to anything made from atoms. However, and this is really a keen insight, it excludes anything made from bits, such as software and ambient information delivered by the Internet of Life. Ambient information allows us to make better decisions because it increases our capability to measure, manage, monitor, and react to the world we live in. It fine tunes our decisions for tighter tolerance to cause and effect. Smith and Hardin, their ideas converged on one point. We can increase our decision calculus with higher quality information. But as we learned earlier today, we're overwhelmed with the amount of data that's thrown at us. Using technology like RFID and other sensors, we can control that. We can use software, we can use information agents to manage and help us make better decisions. 
So in my last slide, I'd like to summarize a few of the points that I've talked about for ambient information, the Internet of Life, and our decision calculus. Successful decisions occur when we have the best knowledge about a particular situation. We can use ambient information delivered by the Internet of Life to give us access and information about all the relevant factors so we can have a better decision and thus better decision calculus. This is a paradigm shift. I think it's counterintuitive because our minds have been dominated by the law of diminishing returns. Instead, we need to think about how we can leverage disruptive technology such as RFID and the mindset of increasing returns. Ladies and gentlemen, when we can do that, we have access to more quality information so we can make better decisions and do more than what was previously thought possible. Thank you.